Hey guys, so in my last video I talked a little bit about some of the features that I'm very very excited about that are available in 40 OS 7.0. Now as I mentioned before, do not put 7.0 on any production environment unless you've tested it in the lab. Uh, the last thing I want to do is make a recommendation that causes you to experience um, downtime or outages or anything like that, right? But one of the major things that I'm pretty stoked about with regards to 7.0 is the fact that they actually expanded upon the dynamic routing capabilities within the GUI. Now, anyone that has any familiarity with uh, dynamic routing on a FortiGate has most likely gotten pretty decent at managing things through the CLI. After all, that's how you had to create you know, prefix list, route maps, things of that nature, determine what type of parameters you wanted to use, especially if you're using BGP, which is the dynamic routing protocol that I tend to use most. Um, you know, little things like that that just make life easier. And I think that the integration into the GUI will help people become more familiar with dynamic routing without having to, you know, do that thing that everyone does where, where we're struggling because we're digging through the CLI because we're not necessarily familiar with the particular uh, configuration parameters or anything like that. So in this video, I'm not going to deep dive into what each option does, but I'm just going to go through a list of the various things that they've changed on dynamic routing and why it's, it's, uh, it's worth looking at. So. get over here to our <clears throat> FortiGate that is running 7.0. This is my home unit. Um, and as you can see, you know, RIP looks very, very similar to the way it was, except that you have a little bit more functionality here, you know, choosing it, whether or not you want to inject a, a default route and things like that. Um, OSPF, a lot of the heavy hitter stuff that you're used to, except that you can add summary addresses. The default settings are a lot more involved. It gives you the ability to actually see, you know, what type of metric do you want to use? Do you want to inject a default route in specific areas? Uh, do you want to do route maps? Would you like to filter based on route maps that you've created? So, one thing to remember is that there's an actual section specifically for uh, routing objects, and that's where your prefix list and your route maps and things like that are gonna be. I'll show you what that looks like in just a second, but for now we're just gonna run through the, the specifics on that. So we have the ability to redistribute you know, statics and then assign the metric value to it, filter it based on what we see. You know, Things that used to, if you wanted to actually dive in and configure things properly, you had to use your CLI. And it was a really, really big drain on a lot of people. Uh, you get down here to advanced settings, and obviously you can set your default metric, uh, your restart mode, whether or not you want it to be graceful, etc. Um, whether or not you want, you know, your overflow max LSA is to be ten thousand or less or more, however you want to configure it, right? Um, BGP is the one where I've noticed the most beneficial changes for me, because um, obviously you can create a neighbor. Now, used to whenever you added a neighbor within BGP on the FortiGate, it was very, very simple. It was just a, a neighbor IP, um, and from there, you know, it is what it is. Anything else that you really wanted to do had to be configured within the CLI. And as you can see here, not only can you add the neighbor in its remote AS, but you can set passwords. You can set the interfaces for each one. What source do you want it to update from, you know? Uh, parameters such as your graceful restart time. Again, you can actually configure you know, how you want to filter things. What kind of prefix list would you like to use? So you can be very very specific with what you're sending out to your to your uh, to your routing neighbors or what you're receiving from your routing neighbors. If you only want to receive a default route in, you can easily configure it. You know, you don't have to go through 900 hoops in the CLI to uh, to go from there. You can set attributes that help you know determine whether or not um, you're going to accept the ASN. Like if they do prepending and things like that, you you can choose whether or not to accept that. 
Uh, you can do soft reconfigurations, basically all these things that you expect in the CLI are now right here in the GUI. And they have some visual texture to them, so you're able to look at them and kind of wrap your head around. Um, I would like if they did a little bit more um, info boxes, little tool tips, which I'm sure they'll come along with in the future. Uh, it would just make sense to help people be able to better use the tool, right? And then you can come down here. You can set your, your distances, both internal and external, your local preference. What kind of hold down timers you want without having to actually do anything in the CLI. And then of course, one of the biggest things is you can choose how you want to do your best pass selection. Instead of having to log into the CLI and you know config router BGP, set eBGP, multipath enable, blah blah blah, and all that stuff, you just sit right here. You you know you configure it within the GUI, easy peasy. You know maybe I want to uh, log never changes. Maybe I want fast external failover. Maybe I'd like to have multipath, so I just check the box right. So it's the little things that go a very very long ways. Um, and it's going to make this so much more useful for folks that, that don't have a lot of familiarity with uh, dynamic routing. Now I made mention that routing objects are easily configurable here. And if you go in here under routing objects, you can see you can create new and you have your route maps, your access list, especially your IPv6 specific ones if you are you know diving into IPv6 your prefix list and your community list and it's it's really really easy it's like I want to create a route map that says you know allow in and maybe I only want to permit from a specific interface or maybe a specific router a certain route I mean or maybe I want to deny everything right you just want to say kill it I want to deny everything from this particular host because I'm only interested in the static routes that I have set. You know, you, however you want to skin that cat, you can. Um, you can match a whole bunch of different criteria to help you know determine what's going to be used. You want a specific route to come in a specific way. You can do this, you know, and it's relatively easy. So you can have your route map and then have all your rules specific to it. You want to do your prefix list? If I can see it, it's the same thing. Very, very easy. I want to accept everything greater than or less than a 24 for 10.10.0.0/16. .10 oh, sweet. That means you know 1.0/24, 2.0/24, etc. That'll come on through. It's it's really eye-opening for a lot of things. So. That's some high level stuff. Um, if you have specific questions on it, uh, let me know. Dynamic routing is one of those things where once you really start diving into it and using it to your advantage, static routes really get boring, especially if you have an environment that's larger. Um, last thing you want to do is manage one or 200 static routes among sites when you can automatically have dynamic routing keep things up and operational, not to mention the redundancy and the failover that you get with that. The fact that Fortinet brought more advanced dynamic routing features into the GUI just means that they're actually taking uh, note of what people are saying. There's been a lot of feature requests specifically asking for these items, and it's because people don't want to go digging around in the CLI anymore. It's, you know, it's 2021, and as much as we like to scoff and turn our nose up to anyone that doesn't know how to use the CLI, we're getting into the situation where GUI's just quick and easy, right? So now, obviously, to debug any of this stuff, you're going to have to have some some pretty groovy um, CLI capabilities and actual understanding of what's taking place. But it's really, really good to see things progressing in the way that they are. Um, I would have thought that Fortinet would have brought this much sooner. Thankfully, they, did, they didn't wait too long. I mean, it only took seven major releases, I guess. But uh, it's good to see. So if you have any questions specific to dynamic routing or, or you want a video made to help show specific things on dynamic routing, please post below. Uh, if you liked the video, hit the thumbs up. If you hated it, hit the thumbs down. Next videos are going to be some unboxings discussing various models, makes, 
why I like this model, why I would recommend it, etc. Uh, people like unboxings, so I'm going to start doing those. Until next time, I'll see you.